today we are going to study about the uh, trigonometric integrals which is 7.2 <laughs> trigonometric integral we go, we're doing today yes uh, i mean is the trigonometric by parts is clear to you i mean integration by parts yeah by parts is uh, good now but it's okay now for me so the second topic is 7.2 which is trigonometric integral Trigonometric integrals is all about uh, uh, trigonometric identities, the integration of trigonometric identities, which is sine, cosine, cos, tan, cot, sec. So okay. the very first example it is about the cos cube x dx. The very first example is cos cube x ds. We have to evaluate. Um, the first thing that comes in our mind that can we apply the u substitution here? Let's check it out. Uh, if I take my u as cos x, then my du will become sin x minus sin x dx. But here the derivative of the function is not inside that function. So I can't apply the u substitution here. Can I apply the integration by parts? No, for that I should have two functions at least. So the only option that is left is now a trigonometric integrals. So I why have can't to... I apply the uh, u substitution? Uh, we, we can't apply the u substitution here because when if I if I, uh, the only function that I have is cos x, right? So I substitute it as ah, okay, okay. And then that should be derivative of the function here. Hmm. I think we have studied the u substitution in the last class after the integration by parts. Mm, no, last, I think last thing we did was the integration by parts. Oh, the, so we haven't done yet the u substitution? No. We did uh, one part of it, but um, you said that we will continue. You will explain further next class. Okay. But well, uh, at least, you know, started okay after the 7.2 uh, we will be like solving more questions on the use of situation okay in the more practice question okay if this is cos cube x now so i have to apply some identity that i know sine square x plus cos square x is equals to one so if i if i break down my cos cube x in terms of cos square x and cos x dx So my cos square x will become one minus sine square x another cos x will become as it is so now i can apply the u substitution because i know there is cos x dx which is the derivative of sine x so if i take u as sine x then my du will become cos x dx what did we do to get this one to get uh, uh, uh -huh. this cos x dx cos x cos x i did i just broke down cos cube x into cos square x and cos x uh -huh. 
and then okay. I apply the identity cos square x is equal to 1 minus sin x, sin square x. Okay. okay. And then multiplied with cos x dx. Okay. So my u is equal to sin x, and my du will become cos x dx. Yes. And instead of sin x, I can write u square. Instead of cos x dx, I can write down du. Now it's easier for us to apply the uh, integration because the integral of 1 is u and integral of u square is u cube over 3 plus c. And u is sin x. Mm. So it will become sin x minus sine cube x over 3 plus c. This is that. Mm. Okay. We just have to apply the integration, I mean the trigonometric identities, and then we have to convert those identities, uh, I mean applying those identities, and then we have to find out the integration by uh, use substitution method. Okay. Example number two is sine pi kaha. Now, in the first example, there was only one function, which was called cube. Mm. Now we have two functions, two trigonometric functions together. So it is sine pi x cos square x dx. Now I have sine pi x cos square x. Um, let's break down this into sine square x, sine square x, and sine x. We call the square x as it is. I just broke down sine pi x into this. Because I know that there is an identity to uh, simplify this sine square x plus cos square x equals to 1. Now, what I have got is sine x dx. So we have to break down everything. Yes, we have to break down sine five x into sine square x and square x sine sine x. When I got sine x, I shifted my sine x this side. It becomes sine x dx. Okay. Okay, and I know that if I take my u as cos x, and when I differentiate it, I can get sine x dx. Okay, so, so why do we break down? Like for what reason? Uh, why do we break down? Because it, there isn't any identity to integrate sine pi. I mean, to simplify sine pi. Pi. But there is an identity okay, so to simplify sine square x, sine square x, and cos square x. Okay, so we need we need to break down until we can use an identity, right? Yes, you have to simplify it, and then you will get either that which identity you use. Okay, why I don't we break down cosine square x? Sine square x. Mm -hmm. Cos yeah. cosine square x. Uh, cosine square x. I, I know the identity here. Cosine square x and sine square x. Oh, okay, okay. When I got sine x dx, uh, I knew that that sine x dx is equal to minus du because when I differentiate the cos x, then I'll be getting a sine x dx. So I took my u as cos x. And I differentiate it, it becomes sine x dx. So my sine x dx will be equal to minus du. Now I have u instead of cos square x. I can write down, but my, what should I write instead of sine square x? Here I have to use this identity. Mm.
and there will be another positive square x. And instead of sine x dx, I can write down minus d. So instead of cos x, I can write down u. So it will become one minus u square, one minus u square, and cos square x will become u square minus d. Is it clear? Yeah. So now everything is in the u form. For applying the integration, I just need to multiply everything. So I can get the, everything in the plus or minus form. Uh, when I be, this is a minus b, multiplied with a minus b. So it becomes a square minus 2ab plus b square. So it will become 1 minus 2u4 plus 2u square plus u4. Multiplied with u square. And this minus sign is taken out. So multiplying this with u squared becomes u squared minus 2u4 plus u6 du. Yeah. Now I can apply the integration here. It becomes u3 over 3 minus 2u5 over 5 plus u7 over 7 plus c. Putting back uh, u equals to cos x into this equation, so it becomes minus cos cube x over 3, 2 over 5 cos 5x five plus 1 over 7 cos 7x plus. Is it clear? Yeah. Okay, we have listed down some identities here. And these identities are called double angle identities. I mean half angle identities, sorry. These identities are called half angle identities. And using these identities, we have to evaluate our function. This is sine square x and integrating from 0 to 5. Mm. I don't understand the, the integration. I don't know if it's related or no, but I don't I don't understand the integration with the numbers on the on the integral sign. Like I mean, one, two, or Five, uh, six, or something. You mean these uh, numbers? Yeah. Apart yeah, not specifically these, but generally everything. Okay. So I know what is the identity for sine of square x. It is one minus cos of square x. So let's suppose I, if I use this identity, then my function will become one minus cos of square x dx. And when I I know what is the integration of one. Okay, but what is the integration of cos square x? The direct integration of cos square x is not available or is not there in the formula list. So we can't apply this identity here. It's failed. To integrate this, we have to apply a half angle identity that is, that says sine square x equals to 
half 1 minus cos 2 x. So instead of sine square x, I can write down half 1 minus cos 2x dx. Taking half outside, so it will become half 0 to pi 1 minus cos 2x dx. Okay, the, we know the integral of 1, which is x. We know the integral of cos 2x, which is sine square x, sine 2x. And again, we have to differentiate the inner function. So it becomes 2 plus c integrating from 0 to 4. Can we do another example with this? Like with this type of integration with the numbers? What, what, are the, what, are the, what is this called when we have integration with this, like num numbers up and down? Uh, this, it is called indefinite integrals. Yes, there okay, are can we do more? yes, there are more examples and the exercise questions that we'll be drawing uh, based on these uh, integration with limits. Okay. This is called limit? I mean, upper limit or lower limit. And no, okay. these type okay. of questions are called indefinite integrals. Okay. So when applying the limit, it is upper limit, which is pi minus sine 2 pi over 2. And then lower, lower limit, which is 0 minus sine 2, 0 over 2. Pi minus, okay. Uh, did you have a calculator with you? Yes. Okay. Uh, can you do what is equals to sine 2 pi? One equals what? Sine two pi. Sine two. Uh, zero point one zero nine. Uh, is your calculator in degree? Uh, can you please enter instead of sine two pi, enter sine three sixty? Because if I think your calculator is in degree. Oh, uh, degree, yeah. So enter sine. Three enter what? You have you sine? have to enter you have to enter sine three sixty here. Yeah. Sine 360. Zero. Okay. And what's about sine zero? Zero. The answer is pi by two only. Hmm. Is this question clear? Mm. Can we do it again, please? Same question again. Same question again. Oh, yeah, or we have a similar example. Similar example. Okay, let's do it for cos square x. Man. The same function okay. for cos square x. 0 to pi cos 2x dx. Again, we can't apply the identity that was sine square x plus cos square x one. So let's apply cos square half regular identity, which is cos square x equals to half one plus cos two x and zero to pi. Instead of cos square x, I can write down half one plus cos two x dx. Taking half outside, 0 to pi, and it's 1 plus cos 2x dx. Then 
the integral of one is x plus the integral of cos two x is sine two x over two. And now we have to put the limits from zero to pi of pi plus sine two pi over two minus zero minus sine two zero over zero. This is the derivative of cosine, right? Yes. Okay, okay. Okay, the integral of sine two x was zero. I mean, yeah. sine two pi. This was zero, and this was a zero. So again, the answer is same, which is pi by two. Mm -hmm. Okay. The difference was only of a plus and minus sign because there was the only difference in that. Of sine square x and cos square x. Okay. Uh, is this question clear to you now? Yes, clear. Okay. okay now the example number four is. Okay, let's do this one because it is gonna be used another identity that is half angle identity. Uh, okay, sine four x. These uh, identities, they're they're um, they're on the paper that you sent me, right? Or are these different set of identities? Um, let me just check it out. The file that I sent you contains the identities or not? Uh, no, these identities are not there in the file. Can you like, send me one for these ones as well, please? Yeah, sure. I think these will, uh, formulas will be given to you by your professor. You just need to confirm from them. No, because when I want to, pra well, because when I'm practicing at home, I want to have the paper by my side. Okay. Uh, for the exam, I think professor uh, attached these formulas or anything in the back of the paper. Mm, okay. Sign 4x2. Okay. Uh, so, I know the integral of sine square x that I just did. Now I have sine 4x. So instead of sine 4x, can I break down like this? Yes, so we can have identities also. Yes. Now we can apply the half angle identity, which was one my half, one minus cos two x dx, and then whole square. So it becomes one over four, in taking half outside because that's the constant term. And inside is left one minus cos two x whole square d x. Why one over four? Uh, okay, square. Okay. Applying the a minus b whole square formula, so it becomes one minus two cos two x plus cos square 2x dx. Is it clear? Mm. Okay. Now I know that the integration of cos 2x is sine 2x. Integration of 1 is x. What about the integration of cos square 2x? Then there comes another identity that is called the half angle identity, which is listed out in the book, and that is this it is equals to half one plus cos four x
Is it clear so far? Yes, so far, yes. Okay. So 1 minus 2 cos 2x plus half plus cos 4x over 2. One or outside. Okay, so the integral of one is x. Uh, okay, one minute. Before the integration, can I add them? One plus half. So it becomes three by two. The integral of 3 by 2 is 3 by 2x minus 2. The integral of cos 2x is sine 2x over 2 plus the integral of cos 4x is sine 4x over 4 multiplied by 2. So it becomes 1 over 4, 3 by 2x minus 2 divided by 2, and it is sine 2x plus sine 4x over 8 plus this is the answer. Is it clear? Yes. How much uh, did we finish? Like, um, like what? When do you think everything will be like okay? For uh, remember, for the last um, last time I sent you the pictures of the of the exam I had. You sent me the picture of course all the time. On the group. Which group? When I had the quiz. You sent me what? Can you please repeat it? The last quiz I had, I sent you the photos of the questions, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, for those ones, like, um, are they based on this or is it another concept totally? Uh, but one minute, let me just check that out because. Okay. I sent you on WhatsApp. Uh, this topic is trigonometric substitution. Just after this, we are going to study the trigonometric substitution. Like if you get mm. the trigonometric integration, then the trigonometric substitution will be much easier for you. Okay. Yeah, these topics just require a lot of practice because you need to, you should have a knowledge how to apply the identity, how to apply the correct identity. So if you apply the wrong identity, then you will be ended up wasting your time and in the exam. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. so it requires a lot of okay. um, the Example number five is 10, 6x, say 4x, dx. So when is your exam? I mean, are you halfway done in your class? My exam is uh, October 11. Oh. And it covers uh, integration and uh, there is another topic. Um, just a second, I'll tell you. Arc, arc length, something like that. There was a topic. It covers integra integral tests and estimates of sums. Arc length, yeah. Sequences, series, improper integration. Mm. So are, these, are those topics clear to you? I mean, other than integration. 
or we covered all of them, right? Here. Yeah, but before the Octum eleven, it is hard. Like for that, we okay, have no, to take a by myself. Also. Yeah. Okay. Because we have only like uh, ten to eleven day deaths. Mm. Okay. So example number five is ten six x take four x dx. Okay, now so far we were studying sine x and cosine x, and now we have shifted mm. towards the tan x and sec four x. I mean, tan x and sec x. Um, we know that like the sine x, we knew that the derivative of sine x is cosine x. Cosine x, yes. And for the cosine x, we know that it is sine x. So these functions were uh, like interchangeable with each other. And we know we knew mm -hmm. the identities to solve it as well. Now we have tan and sec x. We know that the derivative of tan x is sec square x, and the derivative of sec x is sec sec x and tan x. Right. So yeah. both the functions are interchangeable. Into tan into sec and sec into sec x and tan x. And there's another identity just like sine square x plus cos square x equals to one. There is an identity that is uh, one plus tan square x equals to sec square x. Hmm. So I just need to break down my tan six x and sec four x so that I can apply these identities it is going to be 10 square x 10 square x 10 square x and 6 square x into 6 square x yeah. Okay, so I realized one thing. Sec square dx is the derivative of tan x. When I, if I take my u as tan x, then I can take du, which is equal to sec square x dx. So I just need to convert everything into the form of tan x. Tan square x as it is, tan square x as it is, again tan square x as it is. Sec square x is equal to 1 plus tan square x. And this should be as it is because that is equal to du. Yeah. Okay, now instead of tan square x, I can write down u square, u square, u square, multiplied with 1 plus u square du. Now everything is in the form of u. And now I just need to multiply it. It will become u6, 1 plus u square, du. And multiplying it, it becomes u7 plus u8, du. So it becomes u6. So u7 over 7, u9 over 9 plus 6. Now substitute uh, back 10x. Hmm. 
Okay. But yeah. where do you get the 10x from? Uh, which the, final, okay. the final answer. Uh, okay. Uh, when I substituted, my u was as 10x. Yeah. The final answer, I have to uh, write my answer in the form of x, not in the form of u. I have to convert from the u to the x form. So my u was equals to 10x. So I just, instead of u, I, I just wrote down 10x, 10x plus c. Okay. Again, we have two functions, 10, 5x and six 7x. For example, number six. What's in the form Question is that five theta six seven theta d. Okay. Now the first step is to break down in the six square and ten square form. So can I write down my ten five theta as ten square theta, ten square theta, and ten theta? Can I write down my sig 7 theta as sig square theta, sig square theta, sig square theta into sig theta? Yes. Okay. Everything is in the form of uh, square except sig theta and tan theta. Uh, so multi uh, multiplying these two, can I write down as tan 4 theta? Multiplying these three, can I write down as six, six theta? And now mm. it is tan theta, six theta into d theta. We know that this is the integral of six theta. Right? Yeah. So instead of this, I can write down, now, now my u substitution should be sec theta. So when I differentiate it, it gives me sec theta multiplied with tan theta multiplied with d. So my everything should be instead of um, tan, it should be in tan, uh, sec theta. So I need to convert tan 4 theta into sec theta. Uh, okay, can I write down my tan 4 theta into this form? 10 square theta whole square, right? Mm, yeah. And I know what is my 10 square theta is equal to. 10 square theta is equal to sec square theta minus one. So it will be sec square theta minus one whole square and sec six theta. And instead of this, I can write down du. So instead of sec theta, I can write down u square minus one whole square u six du. Everything is in the form of u now from theta to u. Here I have to apply a minus b whole square formula. So it becomes u four minus two u square plus one Tied with u six d. U eleven multiplying this minus two u eight plus u six d u. Yes. Uh, so u twelve over twelve minus two u nine over nine plus u7 over 7 plus c. Is it clear? 
Yeah. And my u was sec theta. So it become sec 12 theta minus over 12 minus 2 sec 9 theta over 9 sec 7 theta over 7 plus. Is it clear? Mm. Okay, now, uh, so far we had uh, multiplication of two functions. Now we have only 10 cubics. And let's try to solve it out. Let's divide this into 10x, I mean 10 square x, 10x dx, and I got 10x, 